so please start with your name and uh, and uh, what is this village and uh, and what's the, its name and where is it uh, can you <laughs> say yeah. Yeah, my name is Tony. It's Tony Clarkson, and I live in a small village in Bedfordshire in the UK. We're about fifty miles north. Yeah, about fifty miles north of London, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, which is only an hour on the train, so it's handy for that. Uh -huh. um, and I um, live just on the edge of the village, so close to fields, and um, and lots of birds and a reservoir and things like that. Mm -hmm. My only sadness is Bedfordshire is really flat, yeah. so there, there are no hills. I love mountains, and so, so you, it, it's flat, but it's honest. It, it's there's something around the, about this county that I live in that is um, nobody visits for holiday because it's agricultural yeah. and it hasn't got anything beautiful. But there's something very honest for me about it. Nothing is made beautiful for others. It just is how it is. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. I and, <laughs> yeah so there's an honesty to it mm -hmm. it's, uh, i never heard this word uh, being uh, related to um to a place to a village but i like the way you put it maybe you you use it this way generally in english but uh, um but uh, yeah. yeah yeah but anyway it's be beautiful it sounds uh, it sounds uh, nice and i um well i can again associate i mean relate to these mountains because uh, here is also fl a flat area, and I would also like to live somewhere where there are hills. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, but well. Mm. And how long have you been living there, Tony? In this house and this village for about twenty-one years now, actually. Um, so, so there, there, and there, there's, there's so much of me in this place now and and on this little patch of land i've got there is um mm. so there's so much love and history mm -hmm. and connections and people and creatures that i've loved mm. all related and situated here so there is something about my little square that i'm um I'm looking after for the next person and the next person and the next person, that little square that there's something here that, that actually I'm so deeply rooted in uh -huh. um, yeah. and so connected to. I tend to think about it in the way trees connect the roots oh. and the roots talk to each other and they share resources. There's something very much for me when I think about my space here about my roots connected with those of my plants and the trees that I've brought in and the trees that are there and chickens that I've buried here and things that, that people that are dead now have brought in and we've planted together. So, mm -hmm. so it, it almost doesn't matter where this patch was, whether I have mountains out to look at or not, the, this patch is rich and I'm mm -hmm. just part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, uh, yeah. It strikes me how how, um, uh, how to put it. Uh, it's such a lovely f thing you've done to yourself. I mean, those twenty years back, uh, such a such a g g gift, or maybe I don't know how to put it. I don't know the context. If you if you are willing to, maybe you could say how did that start. Uh, the, how how we came here. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was actually out of, when I was, no, it wasn't out of real trauma, but I had um, I'd moved up to Bedfordshire with work, um, and I'd ended up in a house. That's my doorbell, which I'm going to ignore. <laughs> um, I'd ended up in um, a house that I never thought I'd have mm -hmm. in Bedfordshire because I'd moved up from an expensive part of the country with a grotty, tiny little house, you know, which was fine. And then Bedfordshire was very cheap. And so I moved into this house and it took five years. And again, a lot of love to, cause I, I, I connect with my garden most. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, and so it took a lot of love and a lot of time to get that house right. And then literally two months after um, getting it, the way that felt I'd done. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, um, there was a thing to say that it was going to be the center of a four and a half thousand home development. And I went from being able to fill, feed the cows 
over my fence and watch the sunset over the cornfields to knowing that I would be surrounded by rows of houses staring into my garden. And so I think I cried. I think I, I, I probably cried all the way through Christmas that year. I felt like I'd been ripped from. And so I needed, you know, we needed to find somewhere else to live. And so we auditioned lots of different houses, lots of different spaces and places, huge, huge different um, a variety of, of areas. And somehow just when I walked through the doors of this place, there was something about its quiet welcome. That's what I experienced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was all, almost, it was almost as though the house just said, hello. <laughs> okay wow. and um and i sort of said hello back and the garden was was nothing um but again i could sit in that garden and sketch out almost immediately how i wanted to be with the garden and how i felt the garden ought to be with, with myself but also with the outside because it was a very closed off garden and and it didn't meld with with what was around it there was no connection it was isolated as a garden Mm -hmm. And there was something about wanting the space to, to be with the other space. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's, that's how it, so out of a load of shite came <laughs> something lovely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. And, and, uh, how to put it, uh, so this, um, love for nature, this kind of, um, g gardening, uh, uh yeah i don't know passion passion i, I don't know for, for lack of, the, of a better word because it's something more it's not even passion it's relationship with a garden uh, uh have you I, I don't know did you how did you develop that i mean were your parents also uh, like that or maybe you yourself hmm. i don't know i don't know um I remember as a as a child, um, my dad used to carry me around the garden uh -huh. um, on his shoulders, and he used to tell me stories. He used to tell me that one type of, of flower, little pansies. I don't know if you know what little pansies look like. Mm -hmm. They're a type of flower. Uh -huh. but they have they look like they have little faces on, and he used to tell me that they were fairies. Mm -hmm. And if you looked at them, they were flowers. And it's only if you um, didn't look at them they turned back into fairies. So um, I used to spend a lot of time suddenly whipping around and looking at these flowers to see if I could catch them. So I think my dad created a sense of magic. But mm -hmm. I, gr I grew up in, in an area of, of the UK that is um, New Forest, which is like a national park. So and I used to run wild over there. So there, there is something about my history okay. and connection, therefore. with. So I had the beach. Um, or I had the forest, uh -huh. okay, and that's where I, I spent my time really. Oh, okay, yes. So, so I think yes. that's where I feel most grounded and most connected. Actually, most elevated as well, because uh -huh. I think we use this term about feeling grounded, don't we? Yes. And and I feel that connection. I feel my feet going into and connected to the earth, not just standing on it or resting on it. I feel uh -huh. feels more like that. Uh -huh. But I also feel elevated and, and yeah, best place for me is on the top of a mountain. That's where joy is. Mm. But outside, just touching leaves, listening to the different, different noises that the wind makes in the trees or the grass. Mm -hmm. And at different times of years when it's drier or when it's more moist, you can just, you know, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> I wonder... Uh, yeah, I mean, um, because I, I at least this is uh, I don't know you that well, but uh, an image of you is that I, I have that it, that you also are a very devoted person to uh, devoted to your work, and uh, I mean in a good sense. I don't know if I'm using this word correctly, but you know uh, I'm a foreigner, so <laughs> please excuse me, but. Um, uh, but I imagine that I was always, I, um, I can't put it, I admire uh, you that you can have your calendar full. But now, given what you say, uh, said about your grounding and your, uh, yeah, uh, 
and about those uh, about the garden and uh, those uh, er this area where you live in i guess it is possible to make it a balance i don't know of your life with your work or am i it's a balance where sometimes i'm falling that way and sometimes i'm falling that way so <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but never I I don't know if, if it is is it but, but I'm I'm lucky you know I'm some of my work I love some of it I don't love um and I do for the money because that's how I am um but I'm I'm not going to use a privilege word because that word is irritating me at the moment mm -hmm. so I'm going to chuck that away but. I feel fortunate that I have got a house that makes me smile. I have a garden that when I look on it, I smile. Mm -hmm. And I think what, what I like to do is to create something that to me is beautiful. Um, and I love that reaction. And I, and I feel I'm going to use a should here. I always feel like I should be able to walk into a room or walk into my garden from different angles. And I smile. Oh, wow. And I don't care about other people saying it, but it's about my reaction to it. And so it does give me a balance because, you know, if I'm sat here day in, day out, day in, day out, then to be able to just go outside and outside for me is just through there. <laughs> um, so to be able to go outside and then just sit for 10 minutes and listen to my chickens tell me whatever they've been up to. Um, <laughs> and hear the birds i mean i'm sad because the swallows have left now the swallows have gone but um so i always feel a little bit not abandoned but a bit alone and exposed when the swallows go um but but just to be out there i find very restorative so even if i'm doing some work that actually for me is not that fulfilling and doesn't feel like there's any difference to be made by doing it um then I come back in and, and there's something for me that's quite restorative. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, the way I, uh, I understand it. Uh -huh. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And so tell me, uh, okay, uh, 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 how did you come to Gestalt, this, you know, this question? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think I've always been with Gestalt. Uh -huh. But I didn't know I was with Gestalt and I was, I was, um, it's easy to talk with hindsight, isn't it? I was, I was doing my doctorate in coaching mm -hmm. and, um, I was doing a very positivistic study. Okay. I got my question through ethics and I was basically asking, does executive coaching work? <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's get right in there and do pre and post measures and all the rest of it. And I was having a bit of a crisis. Now, now I'm somebody who delays. I love to procrastinate. I live with Kairos and Kairos lives with me. So, and we work beautifully together, but that doesn't always suit other people. Um, so I noticed I was procrastinating over my question, but then I was having, I was having a bit of an issue with it, which was, um, I was, first of all, I was having an issue with the front end of the question. It's like executive coaching. What do we mean by executive coaching? And then I thought, well, we can't describe a methodology because if we describe a methodology, that's against my principles at the time, because you're trying to fit the person to the modality that you're using. And how dare you? How unhumanistic that is. So I was thinking, right, well, shit, I'm stuck with the front end of the question. And then at the end, it was, well, what do we mean by work? Who am I to set measures of what work, you know, what success looks like for executive coaching? So I was struggling, I had a crisis of confidence with my question, or no, actually irritation with my question. Um, so that I was stuck and I was just thinking, this is not right, this is not right. So I was uncomfortable with it. And then, damn her eyes, Tatiana Bakarova, who was my supervisor, amazing woman, mm -hmm blew my question into smithereens because we were in a session and in that lovely playful way she has of saying something so fundamentally clever that your brain just explodes she happened to say in front of the group she was saying you know if we um you know, if the people we are coaching if we trust the resourcefulness of the people we are coaching um and we trust their intelligence and we work with them as equals she said, if they say it works 
isn't that enough? And it just, you know how something goes off in your head, like ping, and then it just splats every neural pathway you've made to, to connect it. It's just, if you can imagine this mush, like I'd just been smoothie, turned into a smoothie in my head. And I just thought, well, Christ, of course, you know, and even now I feel quite emotional about it. Because how can I work as an equal with you if I need to check up on you in terms of what you've learned, which essentially, and I sort of realized it was a vanity project. It was about my not enoughness, mm -hmm. needing to prove that what I did for a living made a difference in the business world, yeah. you know? And, mm -hmm. and, and so you know, there's an element of like, fuck that. Why do I need a piece of paper and a stupid looking hat to prove that I have any worth? And so um, I ended up going on very quickly afterwards on a relational change two day introduction course just for a punt. You know, when you, you know, when you're getting over this breakup, which is what I was having with my with my doctorate question, I was getting over this breakup and, and thinking, like, should I stay? Should I change my question? Should I go? Mm -hmm. Fuck, I've, I've invested a lot of money and time in this. And, and yeah, and, and all the embarrassment of being seen mm -hmm. to not do it. So I went on this two day course uh, with relational change with Marianne and Sally. And Camilla, oh God, I mean, even now, mm. Mm, I just met, saw, heard what for me, ah, I'm getting emotional. Um, something I believed all my life. Something that, that had, I'd always felt at odds with the coaching, the orthodox coaching um, fraternity, because it's like, why set a fucking goal? Goals are emergent. You know, why, why set a value? You know, blah. And I was just hearing all this stuff that I had instinctively believed or not realised I believed mm -hmm. and new stuff. And I can't explain. It was just, it was like being on top of a mountain, having that air just going through you. And, you know, if you imagine the hard toil of having to go up with your pack and your knees feeling like they're about to break and every muscle screaming, which is what you normally do. And then you get to that top and you stand there and you just let the air in and the wind come through you and you breathe and you can shout at the wind and you're so full of energy and aliveness. That's how I guess that's how it felt. And I sobbed. I mean, to my to my embarrassment, because I'm not great in groups. I've never have been. I've always felt very other. Mm -hmm. um, I cried my way through those two days. <laughs> <laughs> um, and particularly when I saw Marianne do a demonstration, mm -hmm. which was um, her coaching somebody just using the somatic, just using. Oh. Uh, Mm -hmm. I was in bits. I was purpley. Yeah, I was. I was sobbing, crying. I wasn't just delicately, yeah, having a tear. And that was it. Then that was mm -hmm. whatever you, whatever you are offering, training wise, you have me. So I didn't look back at my doctorate. And that was it. I met it, and and I've not been disappointed with it yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was that was about four or five years ago. Four or five years ago. Okay. Yeah. So I did, I did the um, certificate and the diploma. I did the supervision diploma and I did the EAGT um, mm -hmm. registration thing. Mm -hmm. So it's a really long answer. Yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. Yeah, this is supposed to be such a question. And uh, yeah, and that triggers uh, all that it is inside. Uh, mm, and and is there any, I mean, do, do you find any challenge in Gestalt uh, practice? Uh, is it something very challenging for you? Meaning maybe difficult also, also in this sense, uh, challenge? I think the amount of energy it sometimes takes can be difficult if I'm not well resourced because yeah. for me, I want to try and live it. And again, there, there is something ethically that sits for me that if I'm going to work with it with people, I need to be able to live it myself mm -hmm. yes. because otherwise it becomes, you become an object and I just do it to you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it just becomes then another tool out of a, a load of other tools. And, and that for me feels a disservice to all. Yeah. yeah. So I, tr I try, but you know, when I'm, uh, when I'm tired and, um, 
in a bad temper they're nowhere i mean <laughs> gestalt is nowhere to be seen just just teenage or childish tantrums bad temper um yeah. and if you take the cbt all sorts of projection and god knows what else <laughs> yes i'm guilty of all but i try mm -hmm. to be with my cycle of experience on stuff yeah. um it's it's a funny thing just to uh, cut into because that uh, reminded me uh, of a story a piece of history of polish gestalt ther therapy uh, back in the 80s um, so the, the reason why some uh, people who started with gestalt therapy at those years uh, tra transformed into psychoanalysts or psychodynamic psychotherapists was exactly the, the thing you mentioned, that it required too much energy of them. Uh, that it was so much easier ah. to, you know people it, it's not a kind of um, how is it called conspiracy theory <laughs> people are actually saying this uh, to, 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 to me and uh, yeah that it's it's so it's too much it's too much for and, and I agree that uh, that it is a kind of our responsibility um, to really know what uh, we are, I mean, what kind of job it is, what kind of modality it is. Uh, um, I mean, I don't want to say it's easier to be to hide behind the behind the interpretation, but but in a way, it is in this energetic way. I don't know, whatever. No, I, I completely agree because it, it then takes you so much into the cognitive. And then very easy to say, well, it's because. And as soon as you do that, you can park it. Yes. And actually, there's nothing there that makes you sort of stay with and stay with the unknowing, the discomfort, and all the mess that goes along with that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what else I wanted? And I, I'm, I'm interested in those also in those interrelations between the coaching and 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 gestalt for you. Mm. Um, hmm. Yeah, how to how to ask this question? I mean, uh, <laughs> well, uh, yeah. How, how do you ap apply it in your everyday? Uh, how uh, has that been changing over those years that you mentioned? Uh, yeah, it, it's been changing as I've got bolder. Uh -huh. um, because my refuge, my my refuge personally is the cognitive. So if I feel threatened or uncomfortable or tired then this is quite a safe place for me because it's a very known place um and so um as i've learned more and and i don't even like to say learn more because again that that turns it into something we do too mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. but as i as more has happened and, and i've experienced more in terms of doing things that i would have just died with shame um, at the thought, if anybody told me I'd be lying on the floor pretending to be a baby um, while somebody was a caregiver, I would have probably just said, fuck off. You know, it was just not, not what I would do. Um, but as I've experienced and my own boundaries and my own tolerances of comfort, my window has been open, then my willingness to experiment with other people. And I think as I've let go of ego, Mm -hmm. um as well and it's okay to be wrong it's okay for you know that creative indifference mm -hmm. is such a nice thing to to to, to hold here mm -hmm. but um actually i've been much more able to bring experimentation into um my coaching and for me the gestalt is around experimentation yeah, everything we do in life is an experiment i guess every conversation every, everything we voice is an experiment but but just to bring the sort of more creative aspects in. Because mm -hmm. I've always, in, in, in coaching, I've always used what's going on for me. Uh -huh. um, and so I've been more bold with that, but it's more about the experimentation okay. and more um, handing over to get the other to, to do the somatic inquiry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm interested. I'm. I'm listening uh, simply. <laughs> uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and, oh. and I'm just saying at the moment. I'm just thinking. Gosh, I'm. I'm I, again, I just want to sort of park at the moment. I, I'm thinking. God, am I talking too much? So all of a sudden, for some reason, mm -hmm. I'm just holding the. Shit, am I talking too much? Uh, no, not at all. I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I. I just. I, at least for me. I. I. 
I was trying, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know this world of coaching too, too, too much and I'm simply listening and knowing you, it uh, helps me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I sense such a kind of gr gratitude that you are in, in, in the, in, in this, in this world that I sometimes am so critical of, uh, yeah. you know. Thank you. Um, I don't know how to put it. Uh, not to, no, to, I'm, uh, I'm hugely critical of the coaching world, and I think you know, uh, um, there have been times in the past, and, and this sounds terribly judgmental, but you know, I'm going to own my judgmentalism. Mm -hmm. um, well, I've been very judgmental. I've been disappointed mm -hmm. by um, coaches when I've expected more of them mm -hmm. and I'm sure I must you know there must be times when I disappoint others so I'm not not holding myself here as some paragon but I have yeah the coaching field as you know it's not regulated mm -hmm. and there are so many people who call themselves a coach but basically are a one-to-one -one trainer mm -hmm. and then and don't invest in auditioning different modalities and, and finding different ways in service of the other Mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's often in service of them but I suspect although it's regulated there will be some therapists who become therapists in order to heal themselves yeah mm -hmm. and I, I suspect some coaches do the same and I think I guess one thing I'm starting to to I guess play around with a little bit and again this this feels hmm, feels a little bit provocative to say um which is interesting and I'm just wondering, I'm just now wondering why I'm, I'm concerned about being provocative because I quite like doing that actually at times. Um, and I think the overlap between coaching and therapy is wide. Mm -hmm. And I get a bit, I guess I get, I'm starting to get a little bit activated when we do coaching or therapy, uh -huh. you know, one or the other. Uh -huh. And actually I think it's like that. And the only boundaries, you uh -huh. know, the only boundaries really are the things of one your level of competence and training yeah as the practitioner mm -hmm. and two where you are focusing mm -hmm. as the individual the client mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i think say, there say, are four a's into both i uh -huh. say say more uh, focus on on the client what, what do you mean like uh, what's the difference if i just mm -hmm. um I think the difference, and again, there, there are lots of sort of stabs at this, aren't there? I think with coaching, your classic definition is about looking at something, say, organisationally that you are trying to do in life. So it's say, a task or a project, yeah, a thing you are trying to do that you are not able to for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So it's something about some forward movement mm -hmm. that you're trying to do, but you can't quite reach it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to be able to present confidently in front of the board and I notice I'm silenced whenever I'm like that, yeah. or I want to have the courage to go for the next job. So it's from a place of being fairly okay uh -huh. to wanting to do that. And I think with therapy, then it's, yeah, there is something that is causing me stuckness that is actually interfering with everything else. Okay. So I think that, that there is a different from a client perspective, but you know, it could be that the reason that I don't present well in front of the board is there is something I'm carrying from my past that tells me yeah. you don't speak to those that are senior. Yeah. Yeah, you are, whenever you're with those who are senior, then somehow yeah. you're there to listen and not speak. Yeah. And so, you know, there, there will be an overlap between the two. So you can look back and think, what are you carrying? Yes. What do you bring with you? Do you still want that? Mm -hmm. But it's not therapy, it's coaching. Because mm -hmm. we're not trying to heal that. We're yeah. just trying to say it's not helpful right now. Right. Does that yes. sort of make yes. any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is how I, yeah, uh, I perceive it. Uh, and in, in fact, what I've been involved in uh, is... Uh, for, for 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 years now maybe now not that much uh, but um yeah w the difference or the overlapping between mm. I am provocative here as well <laughs> i will be uh, mm. uh, uh, between uh, therapy uh, gestalt way and and uh, sociological 
autobiographical narrative interviews mm. uh, that are maybe narrative, but uh, but when we are sitting with a person and we are now uh, at uh, at uh, our sociological project, we are you know working over this kind of methodology and uh, and and a lot of uh, attention is uh, um, is put to I mean is uh, to what's the difference, how those two overlap. Uh, so th this resonates in, in, in me and, uh, and it, it resonates in me in this sense that how many spheres of life are overlapped or I don't know. It's not linear, is it? It it's is not, not linear. No, it's not linear. Yeah. 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 If we were to construct an image, it would be lots and lots as you say spheres that's that was such a lovely word mm -hmm. of yeah three dimensional spheres all moving yeah. and coming in and, and moving away from each other and yeah. it doesn't and doesn't mean that we don't know where the boundaries are when we are in that situation uh, yeah. i won't try to hear the person when i am interviewing uh, him or her uh, mm, yeah but anyway, so I, I simply f uh, found that interesting and, uh, and I was like uh, deep in listening and maybe... No, nope. I, um, I just enjoyed the fact that I noticed, yeah, I heard, saw you, you came forward and so did I. We both came forward then with that and I like that. That, was, that felt lively. Okay, okay. Um, 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 maybe I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm simply, sometimes, you know, uh, the, the thing I'm sitting in is that, uh, re relationally, is that uh, I enjoy listening to you and I sometimes uh, don't like that my English is not like my Polish, so native, that I can't really be at your level to, you know, because I can understand everything and I can laugh at anything you're saying and, uh, and, and can't be e equal in this sense. Um, and it's not about equality, inequality, or privilege. No, it's not that thing. It's simply <laughs> about, uh, uh, my want uh, to be more with you in this even sem semantic way, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but I experience you. Yeah, and, and you know, when you name that your English is not good enough, I feel shame that I don't ha even have one word of Polish. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so so then that there is something in me that feels shamed that actually you know and actually why did i even look up how to say hello to you uh -huh. mm -hmm. because i'm so happy to receive you speaking english and so well and understanding yeah english so well that actually i sit here and let you do that work ah, okay okay thank you <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, no matter the the, the 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 speed, I is experience also. I mean, the the pace you you speak with with your passion and energy, and I can experience with you uh, that I can really stop and I can really breathe, and uh, you know the, these two. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm? And you know, I'm 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 curious if you feel that you are holding the the um, thing of interviewer or co-inquirer. I'm just wondering what, what you are holding in terms of your position right now. Yeah, I, I for sure I'm holding something, uh, but uh, maybe the time for sure. I'm aware of the time. I would like to be with you and also be able to uh, to ask you the, the questions that I normally do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these are yeah, and sometimes it is attention. And not uh, always, but uh, yeah. So yeah. So what would you like to do right now? <laughs> yes, yeah, we have like four, four minutes left. Yes. <laughs> um, how would you say maybe one more question from my list, which is next to the, my computer? Um, yeah. Uh, how does Gestalt therapy, the Gestalt world, Gestalt world affect you as a person? Uh, because you seem to me to, to be already formed when you 
it came to Gestalt. Um, you have been already formed, no? God, no, I wasn't formed. It has been the one thing that's allowed me to start to be me in groups. I always used to take into groups a rather rebellious, aggressive teenager because my experience in groups had been shit. So I would go in ready to fight. Um, and there has been, it is the one thing that has allowed me to the point where last year I went on holiday to Portugal with five strangers, yeah, effective strangers to live with them for a week. I would have rather stuck pins in my eyes before. So, yeah, <laughs> gleefully. So it has allowed me to start to, to work on, on stuff like that. I wasn't fully formed. I had some very spiky edges and they're still there. They're still there, ready to come out at times. I think you've probably seen it once when I was just, yeah, just too tired. Um, but it's allowed me to breathe when I'm with people I don't know. Mm. And, and obviously to, to you know, work with people in a way that has so much more meaning and more grace and more equality mm -hmm. um, and more depth. So, you know, in terms of what to other, but for me, uh, no, I'm still forming. I'm not going to finish forming until I die, but, um, but it's just helped me be more of me. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so now I'm also moved because I, I can, yeah, I can relate to this experience and it's so, yeah, and so I'm happy that you have experienced that, you have been to run away. Uh, yeah, and how, how challenging it is, uh, I mean, at least for me, I can speak for myself. Mm. And, yeah. and so do you would you say that you feel a sense that's the last question by the way <laughs> in terms of my list do you feel a, a sense of community of gestalt community do you feel a part of uh, whatever community there is for you or yeah in a really delicious way because i've always hated belonging because belonging means being the same as and playing the same games as and, and I noticed, you know, you can hear my childhood language coming up with that. Um, but I've hated the confluence that belonging meant. The two for me have been inexorably linked. So I've preferred isolation and independence. But um, a term that, you know, Bernie and I have spoken about, um, Bernie O'Coon, uh, Bernie Latouche and I have spoken about, um, is that differentiated unity. It's actually a space where I can belong. And I feel there's this amazing community of just lovely, clever, honest people. But I can be me. So I can be with, I can have the unity, but I can still be different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my difference is shaming. And sometimes I love my difference and don't care about it. Mm -hmm. But it is, the, the Gestalt community feels like a space where there can be that differentiated unity. And I'm not sure what other groups there are that people could do that with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, <laughs> you see the time is uh, up, I don't know, out, I don't know. So thank you, Connie, You're for, welcome. This, uh, for this conversation. I've enjoyed being with you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, wow, uh, it's a nice uh, come, uh, begin beginning of, of the of the day for me here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went to bed late, and uh, so anyway, uh, thank you. Uh, have a good day, for you there. Uh, so uh, bye, and yeah, we'll see you soon. See you soon, somewhere, somewhere else, and enjoy, enjoy your weekend. Day. Two, two days. Yeah, to go. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.